Yeah, exactly. If you liked our intro, we showed it to you twice today. It's very, very exciting. Yeah, so doesn't matter how, how early we get ready, something always goes. Right. <laughs> Technology right, loves right. to work against us. So anyways, here we are for the Tipsy Realtor. We're talking about, we're going to teach you how to make a slow gin genie, which actually looks like a super cool cocktail. And we're talking about the 2024 forecast. So I'm sure you have heard everything yesterday as they rambled away on the news about what was said. But we're going to go through it in detail with you and even show you some of the exclusive slides that were only shown to real estate agents. Yeah, so, absolutely. It was a good forecast. It, it was. I feel like it went so much time from last week to this week because yesterday was such a long and like oh, yeah. full of information day. And but with look, that, we should drink. <laughs> yeah, right? We should have brought it with us. All right. Go. Here well, we are. I do like it. It starts in, in a raw glass with a slushy. With so, a slushy. It's a slushy ice. Okay. <laughs> we're taking our jar from Fifth and Vermouth. So ours. beautiful. Yeah. And we're going to uh, muddle, muddle our mm. mint leaves. So that means you're going to take your muddler mm. and amazing. you're going to squish down your mint leaves. Make sure you get the oils out, you get the fragrance out, get the flavor out. Delicious, right? It does. It smells so fresh. I'm and you're going to drink. Yes. And you're going to keep it's squishing it down until you feel like you've gotten kind of all the leaves hit, all the stems hit. Make sure it's nice. And it's, I think you take about eight leaves, that is what they recommend, is about eight different uh, mint leaves. And We're going to be counting with professionals now. <laughs> And we've muddled, all, muddled yeah. it all down. So now we're going to take, and Lost Things Gin is what we're starting with. Is mm -hmm. a gin. It smells Lost, amazing, too. Yeah. This was actually bought from Pincher Creek at a distiller out in Pincher Creek. Clint and I had the pleasure of going there and sitting there, and it was utterly fantastic. They have gins. They have all this other kind of stuff. Highly recommend if you're in Pincher Creek, stop in Lost Things, take a look, have a cocktail. Great place, great distillery, really nice patio for the summertime. I'm actually really excited about the patio. Yeah, amazing. I, I mean, like, honestly, when as soon as I opened the bottle, just the uh, flavor, it went right in my nose. And then slow gin. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's like, yeah, slow it's gin. Yeah, there you go. It's if you guys never purchased it before, you can see, I don't know if you see on the camera, but on the bottom, there is a whole bunch of different um, uh, herbs and things they use to spice it up. It's, it has a little bit more herbal flavor. And then I put this all in to the mixing glass, and I'm mixing it all up, getting all the flavors together and the flavor of the mint and all that other kind of fun stuff. And Robin bought a very fancy simple syrup from Wildlife a Distillery, which is in Canmore. So we're all supporting local Alberta today. Right. Always support local. Yes. And then I poured it all into Oops, our sorry. glass of crushed ice. And mm. then I'm using just mint leaves yeah. to help garnish it, gonna, like, kind of, just to make it look pretty. Yeah. Aw. And there you go. Here is. There is your beautiful slow yeah. gin mm -hmm. genie. I'm really pass. curious about that. One. Yeah, this one is definitely, I don't know, looks very pretty. Let's Cheers. Take a look. Cheers. To 2024 here. That's a nice one. Hmm. Doesn't even taste like this. I don't know what I expected, but it's definitely... I can tell you it's perfect for me. It's funny because it's like... There's no alcohol. <laughs> it does. It tastes, it tastes like, like there's no alcohol. alcohol. Mm. And then, it, well, it's just funny because like it's a little bit of sweet, a little bit of sour. But yeah, really, really it's, nice Yeah, very refreshing. Mm. It, it's, it's almost delicious. healthy. It's almost healthy. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know what it's inside. It's not... Yeah, it is a really, really nice cocktail. Highly mm. recommend it. I would put this on... I don't even know when you would serve this. This would be a great summer cocktail, though, because if it's cold, you got the crushed ice. Like, but if you expect it to taste some gin here, no. No, it's no, very no, no. non-alcoholic uh, tasting thing. So I'm very dangerous. <laughs> yep. So with this cocktail, though, you could put it in a copper mug because I would keep it extra cold in yeah, a copper mug. Yeah, do it like a Moscow Mule style. Yeah, do it Moscow Mule style in a copper mug with the crushed ice. It would keep it really cold, really long. And if you're a Moscow Mule drinker, it doesn't have the same spice, but it might be kind of a drink for you to give a shot to. Mm -hmm. All right? So totally. We have really, really interesting topic to talk about. Yes. It's going to probably take yeah. uh, longer than 15 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, but well, we it's such a great information. <laughs> and you, you guys have to remember if there's something you're interested in and you have questions, you can comment below. We can read your comments. Oh, you're always welcome to call us 
and we can go through more details with you as well. The most important question, and I think you all can hear it from your clients, like what's going to happen with the market? Is it the right time to buy? Because this is really, really yes. intimidating topic it for is. everybody. Well, and it's your biggest investment. And when it's your biggest investment, you really want to wonder, like, am I making the right choice? Is it now the right time? And I'll be honest, I had some buyers sitting with me last night and they said, you know what? We're going to wait until June when our uh, when our lease is up and that's when we're going to buy. And I said, well, why? And they said, well, we don't want to lose our damage deposit. And I said, how much is your damage deposit? They said $1,700. I said, okay, well, in the price rate you're looking at, they are expecting in this year, just forecasted, was a 6.5%. Mm -hmm. And our economist is usually pretty conservative, Six. which she laughs at because we all tell her how conservative she is. And at 6.5%. It's for detach when you mentioned. Yes. But for the house that they're looking at at 6.5% increase, it would be a $30,000 increase between now and June. So they would lose $30,000 worth of buying power to not lose a $1,700 damage deposit. So obviously they changed their mind. And this is maybe something that buyers need to understand. We're going to go through everything. But if you're looking at buying the house, time is not on your side. That's right. So as you're probably hearing, for 2024, we're expecting the prices to go up. Uh, we're still expecting a very tight inventory market, which is means uh, more buyers for one place. And uh, yes, so basically, we are go like uh, Calgary's market will be going up and we'll be gaining uh, a lot of activity and lots of price growth. Uh, just to point it out today, the Bank of Canada kept the overnight rate the same, which is good news because, I mean, like, you know, you don't want it to go up. Yeah. I mean, we would like to go down, but as a lot of mortgage brokers are saying right now, that we're not expecting uh, Bank of Canada to announce any decrease until at least second half of the year. Yeah. But at least it's not going up. So, which means the rates will be stabilizing right now. I'm going to see some promotional rates on fixed mortgages. Like that usually five-year fixed mortgage gets some pretty good promotional rates. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. So, as Robin mentioned, so for detached, the for they forecasted 6.5% increase, but for apartment is 9.5. Yeah. So apartment gonna go higher and higher, Absolutely. and it's gonna be significant. And the other thing to understand. Should we throw a slide? Yeah, I was gonna get there. But oh, sorry. Things we should talk <laughs> about here is we're still gonna have short supply, so they do expect to see the number of sales increase. And they are saying that the only reason that sales are increasing is because we might get more supply, but we are still going to be short of supply. Yeah, I think you would say that with one month of yeah. inventory we have as a supply, which yeah. is uh, very, very well. tight for 1.3 million um, citizen kind of city. Yeah. yeah, I think we need to bring up migration. So interprovincial migration yeah. by 2024. Here, I'll start doing the slides. And yeah. Hang on a second. Let's start with this one. Okay. Hang on. We'll start with this one. And this is kind of the key housing supply remains key in 2024. So they're saying like sales growth forecasted for 2024, 2% 2 more sales price growth year over year. They're expecting 6.5%. This is showing you a graph of kind of where they see sales and price, price growth to go. The key factors that are influencing it obviously is the economy, um, energy prices, migration, interprovincial levels, which is what you're talking about. So please go away. Uh, so there is, should be a slide about migration. Yeah. yeah. Here it is. That one. Yeah. This one. You want that one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in 2023, we had 49, almost 50,000 uh, inter international migration and almost 23,000 interprovincial migration. So why we have such a shortage? Because our builders, our city, they can just keep up building stuff, uh, building units to provide the housing for all those people who's coming to Calgary. And in 2024, this number predicted to be even higher. Yeah. And so this was the one that I love. This was just talking about interprovincial migration. So this graph actually talked. Yeah, that was about, my favorite too. That yeah. was my favorite. Yeah. I know it was a stunning graph. So it shows you. Every other time when we've seen inventory levels drop, how many people we were seeing 
internationally and interprovincially that were coming to our province over those years. And if you look like in the blue, that's when we had those drops in markets. So we had a bigger amount of people coming into our province, either interprovincially or internationally. And that's and where the biggest price increases as well, just exactly. to point it out, not just drops in market, like drops in inventory of housing, yeah, but huge price jumps. And then you look at where we are now with this blue, and we're like double all those numbers. I was like, wow, that's outstanding. The number of immigrants right now is the higher since 1981. Yes, actually. absolutely. Into the province, yeah. Into the province. Now, this was actually kind of a fun one that they that they showed us, which I quite liked, was actually yeah, showing mm -hmm. how many people have been coming into Alberta from what provinces. So That's coming definitely a good visual right there. Absolutely. It's actually the numbers from BC, like, wow. From Toronto as well. Yeah. 20,000. 20, yeah. 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 Finally, but, everyone has realized Alberta is a place to be. But I think we need to show this. Alberta is sexy again. To compare, <laughs> if you look at the average house price and average sale price and in the corner you can see the the household income yeah media household income this is these numbers are insane so the detach in vancouver is almost two million dollars and the apartment in the vancouver is seventy seven hundred fifty thousand dollars toronto is just a bit lower but this is unrealistic number to buy for the people who's just come in I mean, well, compared to Calgary and yeah. to Edmonton, we're the way, the way, like below it, still, it and is. it's still affordable. And we have some of the highest incomes here in our province. And that's why this is all making so much sense now because we're sitting here and we have all this, we have this income, we have this inventory. The other big thing is they're talking about the reason why we're not going to become Toronto is we have land. But our risk and the risk, so I always like looking at what is the risk. And those are kind of the really interesting parts about that because she did talk about where our risk was trying to find that slide where she talked about risk and she was saying like what are our risks and, and what do we have to worry about in this upcoming market and that was this one and she's saying one of our risk is sufficient supply but it's also another risk that we have is what policies are the government's going to come up with that are going to help increase supply so and this is where i'll be honest personal soapbox <laughs> we have our federal government trying to increase supply and we may even have our provincial government trying to increase supply and yet yesterday our municipal government in calgary added twenty five hundred dollar more fees to developers who will add on to builders who will per house who will add on to builders who will add on to the consumer and they will just pass it down the line so if we have a municipal government that's adding fees on it's not going to help an affordable housing crisis because it's going to cost more money to build a house. And I think we need to mention that uh, the areas, uh, the prediction for the areas outside of Calgary as well. Yeah, absolutely. They're we all growth. expecting to grow. Uh, the Chester Mirror is expecting 6%, to grow 6%, 6% yeah. Cochrane 4%, Ottawa 7%, uh, the High River um, uh, 8%, the Strathmore 9%, and Erie 6%. So we can see the, the predictions of growth like in all the areas around it well and uh, people are always saying where in calgary is the best investment well here is showing you basically price growth in each and every area in and around calgary what you can expect for apartments and stuff like that and then they've got one even for detached houses so you've got that here as well where you can say okay detached houses wise where are we seeing the biggest price growth what are we seeing in average uh sale price so this gives you that great kind of idea of inventory as well detached again is expected the price growth is expected to slow but in all fairness we went up 12 percent last year so you know we're only going to do like maybe six percent this year so it's still a hell of a rate of return and i think we need to mention rental market yeah. And so if you're going to buy, that, that's what you were counting, that if you're going to buy the $250 apartment, how much you're going to save oh, for the yeah. next year? Yeah, $250,000. So this was actually because I'm a real estate geek, and as soon as I left, I had to go to a client, and as I waited for them, I sat here and calculated all this. So if you were looking at a $250,000 condo today based on these price, gro price growth predictions – that probably by the end of June, that $250,000 condo is going to cost 
266,500, the exact same condo. We were looking at, if you were looking at a $450,000 house, that that's going to cost close to 475, almost 480,000. Yeah. And I want you like a point it out. A lot of people don't understand how the price growth works. Uh, in term, in Calgary. And I mean, Calgary again, as we said, it's a very unique market and the price growth, they say it for the year 6.5%. It's gonna, um, you know, but you know what? It can, can go up. Usually majority of the price increase, if not all of it happens in the spring. Always. Yeah. Yeah. It, it may slow down a little bit in the summer if you're lucky. And bumps up again in the fall. Like, I mean, in the last three years, the market has been a little bit even more crazy than usual. But when we say this is how much is going to grow in the year, most likely it's going to grow in the spring. Yeah. And it's going to keep throughout the year. Absolutely. So if you think, oh, wait till summer. Well, yeah, it's going to grow in the, in the spring and you're going to buy in the summer the same prices. We're yeah. not looking any uh, price adjustments this year. Because of the inventory is so tight, we have people coming and the rental market has low vacancy and high prices as well. And the rental market is not going to get better. So we just had our seminar, hmm. which if you came, thank you. And if you missed yeah. it, too bad for you because it was an awesome seminar. But then contact us if you want to catch up on that information. Yeah. But we were saying in that seminar that what happens is when rental vacancy goes down, rent increases. And when rent increases, people are like, hey, I can buy a house for that same price that I'm paying in rent. And then rent increases again, and then people bring their houses up, and it becomes more affordable to buy, and then it keeps going like that. So as long as we continue to have a low supply in rent, which she's estimating, our economist, which is the educated, educated fortune teller of our industry, that this is going to last for two years. So for two years, there's going to be this low vacancy on the rental market, which is going to continue to cause prices in the rental market to go up, which is going to continue to cause the growth of houses to go up. So that's how this is going to go. So all those people are like, I'm going to wait till the market goes down. It's not going down. It is not going down from where it is. Interest rates will come down. But by the time you wait yes. for interest rates to come down, the price, gonna go up. the price is going to go yeah. up. You can take a variable. A variable is a great option if you want to take a variable. And then you could ride the wave of interest rates down yeah. and get Just the price like wait. Now. So If you're so sure that the rate's going to go down, lock yourself in a low price purchase. Do the variable, which is slightly higher than a fixed five year. But again, it gives you a chance to wait for those mortgage rates to go down and lock yourself down when the, you know, you're happy with the rate. So, and actually Anna brought up a good thing. So a lot of people don't know that. And when you're in a variable, you can lock in at the five year rate at any point in time, the five year, the one year, whatever you can lock in at that rate at any point in time during your variable rate mortgage. If you so choose. Now, they did say, though, that we're not going to see those 2% interest rates again. They said by 2025, we may start seeing the 3%, but most likely in this year, we're going to stay in the 4% interest rate. So that 4 or 5%, that's what you can expect in this market. And for the, at least 2024, we're probably not yeah, going to see those yeah. lower interest rates till 2025. And if you're going to wait till 2025 because the interest rate is your thing, you're going to pay more for the exact same house. Do the math. Look at the difference. And I'll tell you. Anne Marie is always conservative. 6.5 is conservative. So if you see 6.5 from Anne Marie, it probably means. What was that last was, year? Do you remember? Was it like 8% and we gained yeah. 12? Yeah. And that's what I was going to say. If she says yeah. 6.5, we're going to look at at least 9 to 10. Yeah. And so, like, of course, depends. Like we always say how unique the Alberta market is, how unique Calgary market is, uh, that we not following a national uh, drum, so Trends, to speak. Yeah. yeah, like, you know, we have lots of people coming. Uh, oil and gas prices, the commodities prices uh, get traded at the higher price. We have developed diversification, finally. So yeah. we've seen a lot of growth in services, in IT, of professionals. So a lot of those things, as long as that going up here in Calgary, in Alberta especially, we really don't care what's happening on the national level, to be honest, because uh, we are self-driven economy here. Do you have that slide? That was a very good slide there too. The I one did, about yeah. the jobs? Yes, yeah, I think it was one of the first um, ones. I'm looking for the jobs. Yeah, slide. hang on. But 
it, there you have to remember when uh, oh, yeah there you go yeah when we take when we take um, in consideration mm -hmm. of a local economy there are the differences um, for us Albertans here how everything is gonna move uh, throughout the year and I do believe if oil and gas which is should continue strong because again they say with all the wars that are going on they're very disruptive to lots of economies and we will have to you know continue trading uh you know and using oil and gas uh and i think canada will be more popular as a trading partner as well just because of our stability well yeah you know and i think that's for Alberta is a very good news in so, its own. Yeah, and I really like the fun fact that 94% of the jobs in the job growth were full-time jobs, where yes. if you look at our at our years where we did not have such strong growth, it was all part-time jobs. These are full-time jobs, and 42% of the job growth is professional, technical, and science jobs, which are higher-paying professions. So Diversification, these, finally. Yeah, and they're saying that all of this is coming from the fact that we do have a lot of opportunity in the clean energy market because it is Alberta and obviously we focus on energy for so long. So that diversification into the clean energy market is actually bringing a lot of growth in the job sector because we are finding ways to find that clean energy and build that clean energy all here in Alberta. So super proud to be a part of that. Yeah, and for the population growth, you know, the, the she was talking about how the other services will grow to serve the population growth, yeah. like, you know, schooling, teaching, health sector, like everything that needs to serve the extra people in the province, those uh, jobs will be having openings as well, which is great news. Yeah. And then the other thing she said is that obviously we're not going to be Toronto because we have the land, uh, the land that we can continue to grow on. Toronto is also being more affected by uh, international migration. That's where they tend to be settling. But when it yes. comes to interprovincial migration, all those people are tending to come to Alberta. And she says interprovincial migration has a faster effect on an economy because interprovincial migrants will buy houses immediately where a international migration tends to go into the rental market. So Toronto will continue to have housing shortages and housing challenges because all their interprovincial migration will end up in the rental market and our we have inner or sorry international migration will end up in the rental market mm -hmm. and our interprovincial migration, which is quite strong, is going to be ending up in the resale market. Yeah, and then just one thing I want to say about uh, investments. You know, like if you guys think about buying a home or investment opportunity, right now is a great time to get in into that market because by the end of the year, you're going to have an actually price increase on a property you just bought and you automatically is going to make money. We also predicted the same thing for the next year. So you're going to be making money for two years, like as we like 99% sure, like, you know, in terms of like, economy and not to do our rivalry here but we did better than Edmonton <laughs> you know Calgary is performing better than Edmonton we are more popular in terms of what people are selecting to choose in but we, even with this Edmonton yeah. is uh, it's projected to, to grow it. yeah. yes so it, it's just uh, started growing it just starts seeing the price increase to where Calgary is be but it's normal because you know people are like oh Calgary is increasing price so let's go to Edmonton now right because look how much um, you know satellite cities uh, grow around the Calgary just because you know I do want to mention this thing uh, because I do live in Chestermere I know that market really well and of course like we do uh, energy a lot and we work in Cochrane a lot you do get more for your money in those cities so Absolutely. even though it sounds like the prices they are higher at like even at like certain things you do get a bit bigger house you do get a bigger lot you do get a newer build uh, a little bit more poshy bigger and the lots are wider so that's why like well 650 in calgary or 650 let's say in chestermere but yes, they do buy you a different product. Well, Absolutely. the bigger lot going to be challenged in the nearest future well, because city yeah. of Calgary want to increase density of the city. So and it looks harder. like they sound like they sound like they're really 
on increasing that density. Like there's going to be a big push on it. There are some going to be relaxations for zonings, although as we heard the zoning, rezoning or kind of redoing something still takes quite a time. Yeah. So she's saying that it's going to take time for this all to settle out for that supply to yeah. catch up. But they, she did say that if you're going to make decisions in this market, really focus on that long-term plan when you're looking at yeah. it and make your decisions based on your long-term plan. Don't just look short, look at a long-term plan. But you know what? It's what we talk to you about anyhow. I don't know how many times you sit down with people and the first thing they're like, well, I want to buy a house. What's your long-term plan? Let's make sure we're making the best decisions for you long-term. Exactly. So, all right. Well, that's okay. prices. Gonna, oh, prices. Yeah, that's oh, all. Prices. That was a big topic. Uh, so, tiki, a glasses. tiki glasses, super cute. There is a six of them in the box. I love them. So, getting you ready for the spring so you can sit on your patio and have my ties. My ties. Oh, that's exactly what I was thinking. Well, you know what? This will drink will go good in that tiki glass, too. Go great in a tiki yeah, glass. I, I will, you know, I have to start this one and as well. And next week, we're going to talk about cozy sweater and we're going to discuss multi generation living. Yeah, it's how you can live with your in laws. <laughs> <laughs> oh kids forever and ever she did say kids are moving out of the basements i was so excited to hear kids are moving out of the basement yeah. i was like yay there's hope yeah <laughs> <laughs> she's talking about herself personally <laughs> but yes i mean this is something is becoming a very important topic multi-generational living together we see it more and more especially with demographic of uh, our cities is changing and you know like people like a look look at vancouver like i think they like a pros now in like multi-generational living they also said though because of affordability that multi-generation living is going to become bigger because of the fact that affordability is becoming more of an issue but more importantly if you want to win the tiki glasses yeah like and share, like and share our show, stuff we are yeah. on youtube Obviously, Facebook Live, Instagram, LinkedIn. TikTok. Yeah. It, every time you see Tipsy Realtors, just like it and whatever. Every, share it. Share it. Tag your friends. If this topic or the cocktail, I don't know, like, you know, is super interesting, you think somebody can benefit from that, please share it to them. Tag their name. Uh, we would love to hear from you because we're doing this for you. I mean, I'll, I enjoy my liquid lunch. <laughs> but, yes, uh, we would love to hear from you guys. Give us some feedback. And, of course, the, you know, the journal is still on sale. Amazon. On Amazon. I'm like, oh, there you go. <laughs> I'm like terrible on this. Uh, but all our drinks and real estate topics for the year, so until end of June, I believe, uh, here for season four so you guys can um you know buy the ingredients you need uh kind of follow along or Absolutely. just do it at home later tonight if you you know don't do it in the office <laughs> yeah, yeah if you don't have a job like us where yeah. you can drink at you know noon yeah and make notes uh <laughs> on your favorite but most importantly of course contact us by the phone yes it's on the screen we do answer it and if you know of anyone who needs some help, who needs some advice, you know what? I had a super sweet daughter the other day that I guess insisted her mom come call me. You know what? We're here to give you advice no matter what that advice is. We'll help you out when it comes to real estate needs. We'll give you whatever advice you need. We'll be honest with you. But the most important thing is we want you to make the best educated decision that you can make that is best for you. So that's really what we specialize in when it comes to real estate. So call us. Tell your friends about us. Refer your friends to us. If you have to, sit down, dial our number, and hand them the phone. We will answer. Yep. Thanks for watching. Thanks. See you next okay. week. Well, Bye. I won't. I'll be in Mexico. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>